determining empirical and molecular formulas. So before we do that, we first have to think about percent composition. So um, when I'm trying to figure out what an unknown compound is, sometimes I'll use an instrument called a mass spectrometer and, um, or even an atomic absorption spectrometer. And sometimes the data that I get back from these instruments doesn't give me a, a chemical compound. So I have, I have some unknown substance and I put it through the instrument. It doesn't, it doesn't tell me that that compound is C2H5OH or something. Generally, the kind of information that I'll get from an analysis like that is uh, something like the percent composition. If I have a compound, what percentage of that compound is carbon? What percentage of that compound is hydrogen? What percentage of that compound is oxygen and so on? And so from that information, um, it's often possible to calculate the empirical formula. Um, but off the empirical formula, remember, is just the simplest ratio of elements, uh, of whole numbers, the simplest whole number ratio. So, for example, a compound that has a molecular formula of C2H4 would have an empirical formula of CH2. So we can reduce those numbers to simpler numbers. Um, so when we when we're given when we uh, perform this analysis and we obtain a percent composition, we can often calculate the empirical formula and not the molecular formula. So this is kind of where this idea comes from, why we're thinking about the percentage of compounds. So here's an example: a 10 gram sample of a compound. Maybe we put it through an atomic absorption spectrometer or a mass spectrometer. And the 10 gram sample is determined to contain 2.5 grams hydrogen and 7.5 grams carbon. So then we'd say 2.5 grams out of 10 grams is 25%, and 7.5 grams out of 10 grams is 75%. So um, if we know, if for compounds of known formula, the percent composition can also be derived from the formula mass and the atomic masses of the constituent elements. So if we know what the formula is, then I can determine from NH3 what percentage of that compound is nitrogen and what percentage of that compound is hydrogen. So we can go the other way too. We can turn a percent composition into a formula. And if I have a formula like NH3, I can turn that into a percent composition. A compound's empirical formula can be determined from the masses of its constituent elements. Convert element masses to moles using molar masses. Divide each number of moles by the smallest number of moles, and if necessary, multiply by an integer to give the smallest whole number ratio of subscripts. So let's look at an example. A compound is determined to contain 1.71 grams of carbon and 2 and 0.287 grams of hydrogen. So our first step is to, uh, let's make a concept map here. And we're going from grams, given grams, and we're going to go to moles, convert to moles. And then our next step is divide by smallest number. Smallest number of moles. So sometimes we're given this initial data in grams, and sometimes we're given this initial data in percentage. And we'll look at one of those here in just a minute. 1.17 grams carbon. So to convert that into moles, I use the molar mass of carbon. And I find, you find that 12.01 grams per mole is the number from the periodic table when you find the um, element carbon. So first, I'll convert grams of carbon to moles of carbon. And then I'll convert grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen. And again, that number, 1.008 grams of hydrogen per mole of, that should say per mole of hydrogen. Um, that number comes from the periodic table. So 
Once I've converted grams to moles, now I have both of these uh, numbers in moles. Now I try to see if they're, um, I try to find the smallest whole number ratio. And the way to do that is to divide by the smallest number, because right now this is what I've generated. I have 0.142 moles of carbon and 0.284 moles of hydrogen. So my right now my chemical formula looks like C, 0.142, H, 0.248. But we can't keep those decimal places in our chemical formula. Those always have to be whole numbers. So although that it, it is true, I just did the math, and that is true how many moles of each of those I have, I, I, can't, can, I can't keep them as decimals. So the way to convert those into whole numbers and still keep the same ratio is to divide each of them by the smallest number. So 0.142 is smaller than 0.248, so I divide each of them by 0.142. Right? So that's what I set up here, divide by the smallest number of moles. So when I do that, 0.142 divided by 0.142 becomes 1, and 0.248 divided by 0.142 becomes 2. So CH2 is my empirical formula. So remember, once I've done this, I, I don't know this compound's chemical formula is not CH2. All this is is an empirical formula. So first of all, let me erase a little 1 there. I was just reminding us that there's one carbon. So one way to remind ourselves that an empirical formula is not a chemical compound is to write the empirical formula in parentheses and put the subscript N on the outside to say that this is not complete. I have a formula here, an empirical formula, but I don't know what compound this is. It's, it's not CH2 uh, because that, once we learn more about organic chemistry, we would know that that is not a stable compound. So it could, N can't be 1, maybe N is 2. So maybe it's C2H4. Or maybe it's C3H6. Or maybe it's C4H8. I don't know what compound this is. I just know that the ratio of carbon to hydrogen is 1 to 2. So whenever I have an empirical formula, it's always a good idea to include these parentheses and include the subscript N to remind yourself it's not finished. I have to solve for N. N equals what? Well, once I figure out what N is, then I can calculate the molecular formula. And that's the true formula of the compound. Okay, let's do another one. A compound is determined to contain 5.31 grams of chlorine and 8.4 grams of oxygen. After steps 1 and 2, the tentative formula is obtained, Cl.15, O.525. So remember, this is what happens after I go, oops. Grams to moles. Once I've converted grams to moles, then I would have something like this where I, ha I said I have 0.15 moles of chlorine and 0.525 moles of oxygen. So I can't keep those decimal points in my formula. Those always have to be whole numbers. So how do I turn the decimal points, the fractions, into whole numbers? We always divide by the smallest one. So 0 0.150 is smaller than 0.525. So I divide both numbers by 0 0.150. And that gives me um, 1 and 3.5. So we're still not at whole numbers. I'm closer. Now I have Cl1, O3.5. So at least one of them is a whole number. But I can't keep this 3.5 here. This is still not allowed in a chemical formula. They always have to be whole numbers. So what do I do if I have a 1 to 3.5 ratio? I have to keep that ratio the same, but I have to make them whole numbers. Well, if I were to multiply this by 2, then I would get 2 to 7.0. 3.5 times 2 is 
So if I multiply this times 2, then um, I uh, then I'll get whole numbers. The 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 3.5 is 7. So sometimes, even after I've divided by the smallest number, sometimes even that does not give me whole numbers. And so when this is when we're in that situation, and I still don't have whole numbers after I've divided, then sometimes I have to multiply. So I'll divide each of these numbers by the smallest, and then I have to multiply this whole thing times 2 in order to make whole numbers. So then I would get Cl2, O7. And it still has a ratio. A ratio of 2 to 7 is still the same as a ratio of 1 to 3.5. They're just whole numbers now. Okay, so here's a flow chart. If I have the mass of the atom, then first I have to divide by the molar mass to get the moles of that atom. Um, I'm going to always have more than one atom, so mass of A atoms, mass of X atoms, maybe I even have three, mass of Y atoms. Divide by the molar mass of that atom, and we find this on the periodic table. So the molar mass is always the, the number that you find on the periodic table. That will give you the moles. And then we'll generate something that's going to look like C, X, H, Y, O, Z. And we'll know what X, Y, and Z are, but they're going to be fractions at this point. And then we'll divide by the lowest numbers, and then we'll get um, C, X, H, Y, O, Z, or whatever the elements happen to be. And it'll be whole numbers, x, y, and z will be whole numbers after we do this. And we'll, if we put the empirical formula in parentheses with an n on the outside, it reminds us that we're still not quite done. We haven't, we haven't figured out yet, we haven't looked at how we're going to calculate, how we're going to turn an empirical formula into a molecular formula. How do we calculate that little n? Well, we'll do that next. A compound's empirical formula can be determined from its percent composition. So um, we just looked at a couple where we have the mass. If I have a mass of a compound, I start with grams, then I turn grams to moles. And then we divide by smallest. Well, if I have percent, instead of grams, then I just have to take one step back. I start with percentage, and I will have to turn percent into grams, and then grams into moles, and then once I have the moles, I'll divide by the smallest number to convert them to whole numbers. So let's take a look at how to do that when I start with percentages. OK, so. This example doesn't quite sh leaves out the most important step, which is, well, how did I get from the percentage to the gram? Well, I have 27.29% carbon. And I have 72.71% oxygen. Well, when I'm converting percentage to gram, um, a percent is always out of 100, right? So this number plus this number equals 100. So when I have a percentage like this, I can just assume that I have 100 grams, right? 100 grams. If I have 100 grams of this compound, then how much oxygen do I have? Let's start with carbon. If I have 100 grams of this compound that has these percentages, then how much carbon do I have? Well, 27.29% of 100 is 27.29 grams. And if I have 72.71% of 100 grams, 
then I have 72.71 grams. So when I'm when I have a percentage like this, these this problem gives me a percentage instead of a, a mass, then I just turn I just change the percent, literally just change it into gram. It's gonna go like this. Change the percentage sign into a gram. There. And now they're grams. It's really that easy when you have a percentage instead of a gram. We just assume that we have 100 grams, and then the percentage sign just becomes G. And then we just use it like grams. And then we're going to do the same thing. We have grams. We divide by the molar mass that we find on the periodic table. And that's going to give us moles of that atom, moles of carbon. Then I have grams of oxygen. Divide by the uh, molar mass from the periodic table for oxygen. And that gives me moles of oxygen. Then I make this first formula where I have fractions for numbers C2.272 04.544. But remember, we're not allowed to keep these fractions, so that's not right. So, how do I turn fractions into whole numbers? Divide by the smallest. Here's the smallest, here's the smallest. That gives me CO2. And remember, a good trick is to put this in parentheses with a little n on the outside to remind us that's the empirical formula. We're not done. That's not the molecular formula. So once we have um, calculated the empirical formula and we're trying to convert the empirical formula into a molecular formula, I have to calculate little n. So that's a compound's molecular formula can be determined from its empirical formula and its molecular or molar mass. So if I know what the mass of the the molecular mass, molar mass of the compound is, and I know its empirical formula, then I can determine its um, its molecular formula. So we'll look at an example of that in the practice problems for section three point two. So here's an example. A compound has an empirical formula of CH2O and a molecular mass of 180 MOU. And a molecular mass of 180 AMU. So um, these numbers here So to determine n uh, from a molecular mass and an empirical formula, we need to convert an empirical formula into an empirical formula mass. So if my empirical formula is CH2O, I have to convert this into a molar mass. So remember, the way to convert a formula into a molar mass is just to take the mass of each atom in the formula from the periodic table and add them all together. So carbon uh, times 1 is 12.01. Hydrogen, there's two of these. And these weigh 1.01 each. And oxygen, there's one of these. And this weighs 16.00. So this gives us 30.03. So the empirical formula mass for CH2O is 30.03. Now in order to calculate N, I also need to know what is the molecular molar mass. This is a number that must be given in the problem. So I can always calculate the empirical formula mass, just like we did. If we have an empirical formula, we calculate an empirical formula mass. But the molar mass must be a number that's given in the problem. I need that information in order to solve for n. So let's look at an example here. A compound has an empirical formula of CH2O with an empirical formula mass of 30. That's what we just calculated. 
and a molecular mass of 180 AMU. So see, in this problem, in order for us to calculate N, a molecular mass must be given. So we put our empirical formula mass, we just calculated on the bottom, 30. That's the mass of CH2O. And we put our given molecular mass, molar mass, on top, 180. And 180 divided by 30. is six formula units per molecule. So this number, remember this is molecular mass, molar mass, over empirical equals n. So n equals six. So CH2 O N is CH2O6. And now I multiply the 6 to each of the subscripts inside. 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 1. So that gives me C6H12O6. So this. Is the empirical formula and this oops, is the molecular formula so the empirical formula is always missing some piece of information to tell us what the real compound is. I don't know what compound this is. I just know that the empirical formula is CH2O. After I solve for N, and then I know the molecular formula, this tells me what this compound really is. C6H12O6, I can look that up in a chemical encyclopedia and see that that's the chemical glucose. And then I have identified my unknown substance. But this, this all started because, remember, I put my unknown substance in some kind of analytical instrument, and it told me a percent composition, and then I calculated an empirical formula, and then I calculated a molecular formula. I have identified my unknown compound.